know some of our friends and people that, you know, we rub elbows with are going to hear this, but uh, let's just keep it real. Lauren Book is only in the Senate because of her father. That is a fact. There is no denying it. Um, Ron Book is an extremely powerful he corp- bought her his corp- corporate he bought her. lobbyist. Um, there is no question that a lot of that money that flowed into her coffers were either done directly by her father or by corporate spe- special interests that are involved with him to ensure that her seat was protected. Uh, would you agree that corporate special interest money in our political arena is one of the biggest, if not the biggest issue of our time? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look, when I uh, opened up my mail and I'm getting seven mailers about me from a ghost pack. And then we look at the financials of that ghost pack and they have no contributions and expenditures. How do you produce seven pieces of negative mail if you have no contributions and expenditures? And that that was just the tip of the iceberg here. You know, um, when we talked about like, you know, how much money was dumped in this race. Look at the state Senate. They took and they did this three pack stuff where they put a Lauren Book commercial on and had three little dots that said Chevron Jones, Janelle Perez and somebody else. Right. And then. The, the money that was spent from uh, the special interest groups and put into my race was ridiculous. But what I thought was even more ridiculous is the fact that public schools were cut by $70 million this year in the state budget. But Lauren's personal charity was funded out of the same budget item that the school system was supposed to be funded from, and it has been for the last five years. So she's gotten $11 million from the school system budget for a personal charity. Now look, here's the deal. If you can afford to put $5 million in a race to run against me, go volunteer and put that money in your charity and let the kids for the public school system have that other money. That's what I was saying. And, you know, I was attacked about saying that, but that's the truth. Tax dollars need to go to the kids in public schools, not to somebody's personal charity. That's what all of this was about, is maintaining their feeding off the public trough. And let me just say, I told them from the beginning, I'm not scared of them. The threat. No, you know what? And good for you. And I, I feel the same way about those kinds of people. I'm not scared of them either. Why? And, and it's, you know, these are people that are just basically bullies and they're yeah. bullies by they just buy the system so that it just keeps churning money for them and their friends. And it, it works often. It works. But slowly but surely, I do think that that's not going to be working for much longer. I think that we're seeing people breaking through that are non-corporate. And I think that the more we educate people that this is what's going on, that you will slowly but surely see um, progress happening in this arena. Yeah, we need to be working together. That's a... Uh, absolutely, you know, absolutely. That is very essential. And I, I do I, think... Yeah, no, Peter... Please. Uh, I think that, um, you know, when I look look back at this, you know, look, there was 25,000 people that came out and checked Sharif. OK, so I'm not I'm not upset about the fact, you know, I, I don't think I did a bad job. I don't think I, that I'm not a good candidate because I think that's what they were trying to portray. I think that they dumped a ton of money in this race to ensure the outcome that they wanted. And in the and and. and ram this train down people's throats. This type of campaigning, the negative campaigning that was done, it is a form of voter suppression. And here's what it did. Great. For black people and brown people who wanted to vote for me, they wanted to give them a reason to stay home. They didn't necessarily need the vote. They would take it if they came out. But by by muddying the waters and destroying their candidate, they were able to suppress the vote and they were effective at doing it because they ran an ad continuously, which they're being sued for. But they said, look, we're going to count the cost later. We're going to run this ad. We're going to destroy her, put doubt in people's minds, suppress the vote and win. And that's exactly what they did. But this is something this is a tactic that's been used nationwide. Yeah. So what are you what's next for you now? Like, where do you go from this? 
You know, it's been such a short period of time. I, I can't really tell you all of where I go, but I'm going to continue to be involved in the community. I think one of my biggest issues as a healthcare provider for 30 years is that healthcare has been broken. It's not being fixed. And there's people at the table who have no idea what goes on in healthcare and what we need to fix. And they're, they're, they're making these decisions that don't help us. We have an aging population in Florida, and I want to continue to work on that. Homelessness is a huge issue. We are seeing an increase in home in our homeless population of families now because of COVID. And uh, that's something that I'm going to continue to work on. I've been working with Feeding South Florida for many years. Um, I think education is, is really important. Um, I have three girls who went to public school. Um, two of which graduated from college already. And um, my little one uh, who was in public school online for two years because of COVID, her math scores dropped. And I want to improve the public um, school system. And so I'm going to be working on that. I think my initial involvement in uh, politics came from being a concerned parent and a concerned community leader and activist, and I'm gonna to continue to do that. Um, so I probably, uh, you know, who knows what I'll be doing as far as running for office in the future, but I'm gonna to continue to remain involved in my community. Well, I look forward to like meeting up with you at some point and, you know, definitely keep us in mind, keep us posted when you have certain projects or certain things, because we generally like to be doing service. And now Miramar is fortuitously in our district. So um, I feel like we should definitely cross paths um, doing service. Absolutely. And I think the biggest service that we can do together is to educate voters on the importance of primaries. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.